Hello my loves and welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I've only done it one time on this channel and it's something I've been wanting to do a lot more often because I really like the idea of helping you guys and really building a community and also just forging a lot more communication and skill in the Zeke's Lunchbox world and following. I really enjoy helping a lot of people and communicating with people about their art journeys. I wanted to do it in a way that was still fair to me but also beneficial for you guys as well so I have completely restarted with my Patreon if you're unfamiliar I've had a Patreon for about a year or so now in the past I was really spread thin because I was just doing way too much on Patreon and it was just not feasible whatsoever it's always the case when you're very ambitious and you're trying to do it all but then you kind of get reeled in and you realize you really can't do it all and I also found that my Patreon had a weird voice like I didn't really understand exactly how I should be using it because I wanted to help people and I also needed my patreon to be reconfigured I just thought these two things would marry really well together this just seemed like a really good symbiotic relationship for you guys who get mentoring and for me I get obviously paid but also I get to help people. My Patreon now is one tier, $10 per month and every single month I do a call out on my Patreon and you guys submit your art or a question or both. Think of it as like a light mentoring but also you're helping a creator make content and you're also getting lots of good feedback on your art. So it's kind of a win-win relationship all around. <laughs> if that's of interest to you head over to the link in my description to become a patron. If you become a patron now you will be able to be featured in next month's video where I will continue to keep critiquing your work or answering your questions. So I believe that's everything I needed to mention. Pretty simple really. <laughs> So for this month, I only got one question, but I think it's a really good comprehensive question. I don't know if this person wants to be named, so I'll just keep them uh, anonymous for now. But this person asked tips on building a competitive portfolio. Whew, I got a bunch of things to say about this. Building a portfolio. I think the idea of building a portfolio now is very different to how we think it's meant to be perceived. I think obviously now I would say it's mostly going to be in a PDF format or a website format. And I would say it's appropriate to have both. And then also with the PDF, make sure you can print it off if you need to take it. For all of my graphic design jobs that I've ever gotten, it's either been through word of mouth or they've followed my Instagram or they have seen my website. So I honestly think that you need to just have a really good Instagram if you're going to apply for a creative job you need to be able to show that you can be a little bit diverse in that way so I would say one you need a really good website two an additional PDF but I would pretty much put that last and also three a really good Instagram also if you're applying for a lot of work probably a good LinkedIn as well an employer or a gig or somebody hiring you for a gig should be able to see your style and your voice instantly and they should also be able to see that you are capable of doing a bunch of jobs. <laughs> I recommend just picking a niche if you're primarily an illustrator and you want to do like poster design or album art. You just have to display those examples. What I've always been taught is that you really just need to have a very specific niche and a very specific voice. You need to be able to stand out of the crowd and have somebody pick you because they really like what you do that you need to have a very strong branding of your own artwork and that has to be pretty synonymous around so i it's I'm kind of giving conflicting information because you need to be able to niche down, but you also need to be broad and show that you are capable of doing a wide variety of skills. So an example that I could give you guys is I do a lot of graphic design work, but specifically for merchandise. So t-shirts or packaging design, you kind of need to show that you're very capable of being able to draw. So because I did a degree in fashion, I think um, my graphic design specialty is more about graphics on t-shirts and I know those skills are transferable for other things but somebody will just constantly 
come to you if you are the graphic t-shirt person, you know? So the way to make your portfolio stand out is you need to be able to see your personality and your voice and your style, your personal branding like instantly. So I would say work on niching and being very, very specific about who you want to sell to. So next up, we're going to head over into the art portion. Not many of these need physical tweaking, so uh, I'll just pop them up on screen and uh, chat about them. This one's from a patron who submitted their artwork. Their handle is this on screen, Fefe Brightside, I believe. I'm not sure if it's Fief Brightside or Fefe. So this person submitted a skull with beautiful electric blue hair and a pink background. Okay, first of all, I think it's a really playful piece, really cool. And I think this is a design that can be transferred to quite a few things, not just a print. I don't know if this is an artwork that you would be popping up on Instagram or anything, but I can see just for Instagram purposes or internet purposes, I would say you need a little bit of tweaking in the color grading. This is a really random thing to give a hot tip on. But I can see that you've got some color grading problems down the bottom where it seems like to me this is a acrylic painting on canvas. It seems like the lighting is just a little bit uneven so you're getting a bunch of like blue in the pink down the bottom there, which I don't think is necessarily what you wanted. The way I photograph my paintings is I close all of the windows. I try to illuminate the room, but not directly onto the painting and try and get as much even light as possible. I open up my camera lens as wide as possible to let a lot of light in, but also not too much where it gets really grainy. And that just eliminates a lot of glare in the piece. It's very, very hard photographing a painting. So the struggles are real. I totally understand. I honestly wouldn't change that much with this piece. I'm more just not sure exactly what you're trying to say with this piece. I think skulls are a really good topic that are nice and are unanimous across the board. I think it's something that a lot of people are more than happy to display in their homes. So it's very marketable. If you want to sell a bunch of paintings, make some skulls, guys, especially if they're animal skulls. Those sell really well too. So this giraffe skull is really cool and really graphic. And I like the contrast of it being a skull, but it's really playful. It's got a good, I don't know, tension between the topics there, but I'm a little lost on like what you're exactly trying to say with your piece. Not that every single piece has to have, you know, a very specific meaning. It's more, I'm not understanding your voice and I kind of need to see that communicated a little bit more. So if you are trying to go for that dichotomy of being uh, a skull, but it's really kawaii. I think those two things need to be pushed a lot more, you know? Know what I'm saying? Therefore, like the voice and what you're trying to communicate is uh, a lot more obvious. Okay, so Fifi Brightside, I think it's Fifi, Fefe. <laughs> It's Fifi, right? Because Fifi is normally F-I-F-I. -F -I. Anyway, <laughs> really good work. I'd like to see you just push your voice a lot more. And this can kind of happen in the pre-painting stages where you're really brainstorming and you're really trying to figure out what you're trying to communicate in the piece. I think you've got a good eye for, for something there. I just want to see you like push it a lot more. Hone in on the voice and then the rest will follow. Okay, so this one's from another patron. Their handle is Tamara JD. Hello, Tamara. You've been a really awesome follower. Thank you so much. Okay, so you have two questions here. How did you find the most effective way to learn proportions and on anatomy of the face? And do you have any tips or tricks when you are making an artwork look three-dimensional? Okay, you guys, this is the stage that everyone wants to skip over because it's really threatening and scary and they just don't enjoy the stage, but we all need to constantly go back to our fundamentals all the time. I'm always going back to getting a cube and shading it in lots of different lighting, getting a circle, shading that in lots of different lighting. Do as much studying as possible. It should be something that you do weekly, every day. Don't push yourself because that's stressful, but you should be going back to your fundamentals all the time. I would say right now with the piece that you've submitted, here you definitely need to go to your fundamentals and learn about exactly all of the shapes that make up a face so there's obviously a cube and then there's a little triangle for the front of the face um, honestly the best person to really go through it systematically is Proko I've mentioned Proko a million times we all watch Proko 
photo on YouTube. He's gone through and made sure every single step of the way is just very succinct and clear and really breaks down all the different shapes that a face makes. So I think your shading here is really good and I think you're really still learning how to use your tools. Just make it a habit to learn your fundamentals as much as possible. Do a lot of life drawing. We all need to do a lot of life drawing. There's honestly no other way for me to like explain it except you just need to go back to the fundamentals and learn exactly all the shapes that make up a face and those two questions that you submitted hopefully are answered. Maybe for next month just do a bunch of different life studies and study a lot of lighting so you understand exactly how a three-dimensional shape works because a face has so many different elements and shapes on it you just really need to know and memorize where they're all hitting and where the light is hitting. So I don't know what else to say except go back to the fundamentals. Okay, so the next art that we've got up is from... You didn't give a handle so I don't know who to credit this to because I don't really want to put out your name out here because you haven't mentioned that I could. I will pop your artwork up on screen and you said here is my art. I literally have no idea what I'm doing. I did this on my phone. I need to learn digital art. I mean, I don't understand. I need more information about this. Like, what do you mean you did this on your phone? Because it's, did you do it with your phone with a stylus? Because it's so well done. It looks really professionally drawn. I need to know more information. Like, I want to know how long you've been drawing because it feels like you really know your fundamentals. I think all of your shadows have hit really well. I think it's a really beautiful, like, commercial illustration. I know for a moment in time, a lot of commercial illustration was minimal line work with some a couple of shadows and some really light washes of color. I don't have many tips to give you to be quite honest because I don't really understand like what you could improve with this except to just do more of them. I think you've submitted a couple of artworks in the past and you've just got really good art skills. I, I need more information. You said here you want to learn digital art. I think you've demonstrated that you definitely know how to use digital art as a medium. I just need to know like what your goals are specifically with that so if you submit again please give more information so I can I don't know, help you and be a little bit more specific about what you want your goals to be because right now I think they're pretty amazing. You did it on a phone. This is insane. Okay, you guys, that is it for today. I hope this was helpful. I know it's a very quick one, but hopefully next time around, we'll have a lot more submissions and a lot more specific questions so I can answer and help you and figure out what direction you want to go with with your work. But yeah, if you want to be part of this video series where I go through your art critique and give lots of mentoring and tips, pretty much you name it, anything you're really unsure about, become a patron and and submit your art or questions and yeah we'll go from there okay you guys that's it from me thank you so much for watching i will catch you guys in the next video make sure you give the video a like and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos like this you can head over to my very first video of art critique stuff below catch you guys in the next one bye